हरे कृष्णा अंत काले चमा मेव स्मरण मुक्त कलेवर यह प्रयाति समाव यात्र संशय एंड हु एवर एट द टाइम ऑफ एट द एंड ऑफ हिज लाइफ क्विट्स हिज बॉडी रिमेम्बरिंग मी अलो एट वंस अटेन्स माइ नेचर ऑफ दिस देर इज नो डाउट thank you so as it seems there is a morbid nature to today's verse morbid is a good word <laughs> since uh, most of the members of the audience years that uh, they grew up in the land of india we never get shocked when we hear that there is death in fact many of us may feel relieved that i'm hearing it again <laughs> this goes to prove that i am from india we have a culture where we speak of death honestly so anyways um it's not that krishna has today decided to visit india and therefore is taken up this outlook that let me speak about death today last uh, week we had this session here Yeah. Did we cover uh, verse numbers one to four or yes, one to four? Okay. So if you go to verse number two and you look at the second half of the verse, that will give us a clue as to why Krishna is speaking about death. Did you find the verse? Have you found that verse? Yes. so uh, can you can someone read out what does the sanskrit say rayena kala yacha kaatam neyasi ne tiya tatma havi that is second one was to second half second half prayana kale thank you one everyone anyone else prayana kale yacha kaatam ji prayana kale you know what is prayana kale prayana kale is travel telugu pravas is travel prayan yes telugu is very there are a lot of words from sanskrit in telugu so it's about a journey prayan kale prayan is when the life air journey is out of you kale means time so here you uh, you means a living entity in the human form of body is going on an unplanned journey it's not very planned uh it's a journey whose ticket we have been given we did not even ask for it but it was given to us the moment we were conceived the moment conception took place and each one of us had the identity of existence was awake once again within the womb as a single cell that is when we were programmed to at one point of time at some part, point of time after that we were programmed to be on this journey And what is this journey we have taken uh, so many journeys in life so many uh, uh, we have made so many changes in life we have moved from one place to another but we did that we chose to do that sometimes we may have been forced to make choices 
there would have been times where we gave in to the circumstances but it was we who knew that although i don't like it i still have to do this or i like it i am doing it i am going on this journey i am moving from place a to place b but prayan kal kal is time kale is vibhakti form it is it means that particular time what particular time prayan so when the life air and we floating in the life air leave this body so we transition out of this body for the last time it could be the first and the last time and there's no coming back unless and until it is an nde but typically there is no coming back and that is called as death <coughs> you know we 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 grew up or most of us are influenced by the themes of tollywood bollywood so those themes even if it is a very very gory scene a very very a disturbing uh, moment they gloss it over isn't it it's nicely glossed over so um even if uh, one is uh, you know there is a, a disaster happening in you know tollywood everyone knows tollywood is there anyone who doesn't know tollywood i mean people here other than vanamali does everyone have a sound box Yeah, we are. Okay, all right. <laughs> that's that's good to know. <laughs> Because I just heard him speak. <laughs> Everyone else, I can just see expressions on your face, so I know that there is some <laughs> there's a facility to hear, but you can respond, right? So Tollywood, everyone is aware of Tollywood. Yes. Tollywood, Bollywood. Yes. yes. so there is a silver screen they kind of come up with so many things on the silver screen for you to be sitting there let's say there is some uh, some man made or natural disaster that is being shown what would tollywood how would tollywood bring it to you how would bollywood bring it to you how would hollywood bring it to you or any documentary bring it to you let's say it's national geographic or some other documentary how would they portray that blue yes there will always be a silver lining somewhere always a silver lining somewhere and therefore they will use all these um exotic words to describe it they will come up with phrases terminologies to describe it and the 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 uh, the form of this words is such that it takes away our mind from reality we feel the impact however we feel uh, we always feel that we are an observer we are not involved in it you understand it's like uh you can feel the pain it's as if you are undergoing the pain it's as if you are undergoing all the emotions but there's always the identity uh, there's always the 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 um, uh, unconscious uh, realization that this is a screen and this is me or this is some part of the world where it is happening and this is where i am so it's very detached it's very um separate very much separate from oneself and that is how the word mrityu or death is it seems very distant it seems something very separate from me it seems something that uh, doesn't really relate to me right now although the emotions are there hence rather than use the word mrityu shri arjun calls it prayana kale so that it makes it a little more re- relevant at the time of transitioning out of this body chakatham 
in what way katham what are the vikalpa what are the options what are the uh, various uh, paths niyojayasi niyojan yojan niyojan niyojayasi what are the various options that i could be looking at what are the various ways that i could try to come up with a plan or to have a plan or to use a plan <coughs> of remembering you so simply put although i kind of have used so many different ways to or used so many different sentences for a very very simple a uh, thought that has been expressed what am i supposed to do to remember you at death if i had said that most of you is like okay all right this is another pravachan for you so how do i make it interesting i i took you to bollywood because i had nice prashad <laughs> so that is why i made it interesting right now my stomach is full <laughs> so i don't have to worry about finishing this off as early as possible <laughs> so prayanak and to answer his question to answer his what arjuna had asked to give an answer to that krishna is starting to explain this is the beginning the first thing he wants to explain is how you can remember him at what am i supposed to do at that is actually what arjuna is asking so krishna takes it to me how i am to remember you at that and this is krishna's pro uh, sorry prerogative it is uh, his independence or his nature as the independent lord he is our eternal well wisher so he finds a way to help us even though we may not realize that we need his help that is bhagwan bhagwan should be a person who is very knowledgeable you know what the meaning of knowledge is that even though we may feel that it is not uh, that we may we may feel that we do not know it or we do not need it knowledge is still available just because newton uh, before newton no one said there is gravity gravity did, <laughs> wasn't in hibernation was it so the knowledge was there that is the nature of knowledge knowledge is always there so krishna because he is bhagwan and one of the um, pillars of being bhagwan is to be all knowledgeable he not only exists but he also finds a way to help us exist to help us try to achieve the goal of existence he does that we can we can say he is not just god he is a smart god just as you have smartphones <laughs> smart plugins so is a smart god the general understanding of god is that he is someone distant who simply sits there and says okay you did this okay you get that you did that you get that krishna as the vedic scripture describes him he is a very smart god he is more powerful than alexa and you know, he is this very source of ai because he is a source of ai therefore is ni the opposite of ai <laughs> ai is artificial so it is natural intelligence that was such a pj sorry <laughs> <laughs> but everything has its place right even a pj has its place <laughs> how did i even come up with that term knowledge i have no idea i feel so bad about myself did i just say and i <laughs> that's like so cliche isn't it <laughs> anyways so how is that what does ai do what is ai in one sense what is artificial intelligence it is a uh, collective um, a collection of data that has been uh, arranged programmed or that exists in such a way that it functions a little better than Uh, collective uh, uh, collective group of beings 
how how does it function like that it's able to uh, there is uh, some uh, uh, some computation there right so alexa how are you so whatever has been fed into alexa is like like um, day before yesterday i was at someone's place today is friday right so that was wednesday uh, how are you doing alexa and alexa says um considering that it is the middle of the week i am doing above average <laughs> now that makes you feel good isn't it oh yeah alexa is as <laughs> is in the same state as me so that data has been fed in so to to be able to anticipate has taken a lot of thought processing to able to be able to anticipate how to help krishna can you imagine how quick krishna's processor must be working now if you want to make god interesting this is how you make god interesting god is already interesting but we need to make him interesting in our lives otherwise he'll be there in this laptop or in this in these pages and we'll be here a feet away from the from the god and we are like my lord is in there therefore i worship him what about the lord in here when we are going to worship this body not that we have to offer respects but worship the body also means proper use of this body this book when we worship what do we do we try and put it to our head so then should this body also be treated in a very respect respectful way the same feeling is that therefore we feed the body that is one way of being very respectful towards the body another way is to make the body do what it likes to do not what we think it likes to do this body is made up of the five senses the five senses like to serve the master of the senses but when we think that we know what it likes then we think that it likes to serve me and when we do that the same eating process brings about indigestion and then we realize that maybe that is not what the body was liking yeah so antakale cha mahameva smaran uttva kalevaram antakale so krishna arjun says prayana kale so krishna says all right arjuna you you brought in a different word i have to bring in tollywood Mm-hmm. so he says antakale now we feel back at home yeah, yeah now it is vedic knowledge that has been given so therefore krishna is a vedic god he is speaking of antakal yeah now everyone is serious antakal oh my god antakal antakal by the way if you can just look to your right or left you know just have a look to your right or your left even if you don't want to do that just look straight ahead of you there is kal and i have no idea whose antakal it is it could be mine it could be someone else's that is the understanding of antakal antakal does not mean the moment of death antakal means time which right now can finish everything that i consider to be existing that is antakal antakale cha maam eva maam eva means me only this is such a jealous god right or maybe he is a very very um selfish strict selfish most self fulfilling god <laughs> he likes to fulfill his own desires he likes to be worshiped mom eve it's like um, you know a plus b the whole square is equal to a square plus 2ab plus b. okay sorry <laughs> plus b square <laughs> uh, i felt sorry because i said sorry because i was kind of was, i realized i was showing off <laughs> now if a plus b the whole square says this is the only answer to this this is what it means what a plus b the whole square is actually a square plus b square plus 2ab is it boasting no. is it self engrad and and the design and and grandizement is it self engrandizement 
is it a self proclamation self declaration or is it just a truth so how do we know when krishna is speaking the truth or whether he is boasting and him krishna is god so he always speaks truth that's nice so if i can become god i can also always speak the truth because being god makes you speak the truth and others also confirm it others also confirm i just need to pay someone 1 million dollars and they'll be most happy to confirm that i'm god and then whatever i say is the truth krishna is speaking the truth can be accepted if we know that krishna is the truth there's no other way we have to spend time in understanding if god specifically known as krishna is the truth the absolute truth we have to spend time having that realization and if he is the truth then the truth always prevails so mom evil is definitely appropriate in the scenario perfectly appropriate so antakale cha mam eva smaran smaran uktva kalevaram smaran uktva when one remembers at the time where everything is going to be destroyed when we say everything basically it means that we are going to be non existent in the present form because as soon as we become non existent everything that is existing is non existent for us so whether the whole world remains as it is or the whole world uh, undergoes dissolution along with us it's the same for us if we have lost our existence when i say lost our existence our existence as this identity a man a woman a father a son a daughter a wife so many uh, de- um, we have designations so this designation this existence of designation or designations as soon as that is gone which we call as death which we call as uh, uh, the final moment everything is lost everything that exists is gone from our existence hence it is antakal krishna says kalevaram kalevar you know what is kalevar you know sometimes uh, in in the hindi language what is a morsel called as niwala niwala have you heard of kaleva mm-hmm. ek kaleva niwala is mm. more of uh, urdu hindi <laughs> That's what you know. Kaleva means Babuji is from Hyderabad. Only? Only, right. Yeah. Kaleva is a morsel. Mm. But actually what it means is life. You have life within you. This is going to give you life. So Kaleva is not just a body. It's a living body. So Antakal is at the moment of that of the living body that is the body is now going to finished smarangutva as soon as you remember me and me only you will be transferred to another existence to another state of being what is that yah prayati <coughs> transitioning from there you will reach prayati is go to jeev yeah and so that person <clears throat> the person who has given up the body madbhavam madbhavam means 
his nature. Madhbhavam also means under my nature. Bhava also means existence. So under my supervision. Madhbhava means that which is directly um, handled by me, controlled by me, influenced by me. Madhbhava means directly in association with Krishna. So yah prayati sa madhbhava yati nastitra sam and na asti atra samshaya atra can exist. Atra word is used <coughs> when we have to when one is being very very uh, um, definite, very very one wants to leave a deep impact. Atra samshaya. There cannot be any doubt about this. Atra samshaya means um, um, samshaya is doubt, confusion, or uh, no clarity. Atra samshaya can be. What can be? What kind of confusion can be? Na asti. Not even a moment of lack of clarity. Not even. A bit of confusion. What what uh, cannot be the confusion that you will achieve? Yah prayati. So what you achieve about that there can be no doubt. Why is Krishna speaking um, in such definitive terms? Because you only get to die once, right? <laughs> you don't don't get a second chance. So Krishna cannot speak in terms of maybe, if you want, uh, we'll think about it. Let's have a discussion later on. We'll analyze. No. That's a very singular moment. So he says, Nati as, Nati asti, sorry, Na ati asti samshaya atra. Nasti atra samshaya ha. Na asti atra samshaya. About this, there is no doubt. When he says that, he is not saying, Arjuna, you should not have any doubt because he knows that there is no... I mean, what can be achieved by us telling Arjuna, you should have no doubt. He is saying that there is no doubt. If you, even if you don't accept it, still there is no doubt. <laughs> this is how it is. So he is being very, very authoritative here. Prabhupada says, this verse, the importance of Krishna consciousness is stressed. And we read the purport. If you paid attention to the purport, he explains why. Why is why does Prabhupada say that in this verse, the importance of Krishna consciousness is stressed? Okay. If you practice Krishna consciousness only at the moment of death, you can remember Krishna. Correct. Anything else Prabhupada says? Yes, Prabhupada is talking about by chanting Hare Krishna regularly, we can remember it. We have to remember Krishna. Yes. Yes. Therefore, uh, one should practice Krishna consciousness from the very beginning of life. If one wants to achieve success at the end of life, the process of remembering Krishna is essential. Therefore, one should constantly. Anything else? There's, there's uh, another uh, point that Prabhupada has brought out. Is it about you, Krishna being the purest? Okay. All right. I need to be tolerant. Yes. No. Krishna consciousness is stressed in relationship to in relation to that statement. It's that uh, what Prabhupada has mentioned is so um, subtle, or it's so direct, or it's so simple that we generally overlook it because it seems as if we've understood it, and maybe we've understood it. Still, repeating it is helpful. 
So basically, uh, here, uh, based on what you said, uh, the uh, I mean, it's at the death rate, I'll, and I'll figure it out. Yeah. Okay, so that I'll figure it out, maybe. So one can be a little, time, you know? one can, you can be a little complacent. Right? Complacent. Okay. Or one may be confident that I will remember Krishna. One may be confident I'll remember I remember Krishna. I just have These are wonderful understandings. Prabhupada's words. It's very, it's direct. What you have said is there, or those two statements, one you made and one he made, is there in Prabhupada's purpose. You also said about uh, um, tolerant as a tree, that's there. There's another statement that we missed out. Let me give a hint. It's there in the very first sentence. However, the point is being stressed in the second sentence. Of the Anyone purport. who quits the body, he will attain my nature. Okay. What is right. what does Prabhupada say? Anyone who quits his body in Krishna consciousness at once transfer to the transcendental nature of the Supreme Lord. At once. It's only one. No. It means immediately. immediately. At once transferred. Do you know how much relief that gives? Mm -hmm. And we take we've taken it for granted. Such a high level of being granted. <laughs> we've taken it granted so easily. At once transferred. Yeah. Even if you have to go for prasad, we have to go and <laughs> have prasad there or have prasad come to us. We have to put it into our mouth. Here he says, just remember and at once transfer. It's as if there is some vimana, some plane waiting here. We are already sitting in it. The ignition is also turned on. We just have to remember and zoom. There is, if you don't remember, then there's something that is keeping the plane held back. Otherwise, it is in full throttle. At once transfer. This verse is Krishna's, it expresses the Lord's benevolence to such, uh, um, you know, to such great levels. Who does that? He's, it's like just remember. He doesn't even say. Prabhupada says that therefore one should. Krishna doesn't say that you should remember me throughout. And this person really needs us there. It seems like that. It's we, we, yeah, we must have some important role to play there. The fact is, we don't. Actually, he's giving a lot of grace points also. And he's filling at the end. Just remember him. What if I have not remembered him? I've done nothing to remember him throughout my life. If I do remember him at the moment of death, what would happen? Krishna says, come. You'll come to me. Why would you do that? Why would he do it? Why is there? Why does it seem that there is some desperation within him? Krishna likes us. Or he is missing us. All right. Okay. Come stay with me here. Prabhuji, isn't there a story about some Brihad? Uh, before you go to Golo, you actually have to do a no, I internship. Internship where you actually go into a Lila with Krishna is happening. In Krishna, after yeah, why should only Amazon do that? <laughs> <laughs> Give you internship, see whether you like it, see whether they like you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Here he says, he doesn't even say, he says, Smaran, you will be transferred to my nature. That is wherever his jurisdiction is directly there. There are many places where his jurisdiction is indirectly there. I mean, there are various links in between him. And there are so many levels. Here he says, my nature, mad bhavam. That, is, that means there, is, there are no links in between. Why would he do that? He likes us. He misses us. All right. I mean, it's God. 
Or we belong there. Or... We belong there. We are part and parcel of Krishna. Part and parcel of Krishna. So therefore, he feels there's something missing within me. <laughs> Think about this. What is there? What is benevolence? What is mercy? Think about it. Is it about... Uh, uh, does mercy need me to miss someone to be merciful? Does mercy me, uh, need that I like someone and therefore I'm merciful? It comes unconditionally. Understand what is mercy, what is daya, what is benevolence. And if we can, then the very idea of Krishna being benevolent could maybe melt our hearts. <laughs> How is he full of so much mercy? I mean, if he likes me, I understand he has a need. Correct? He feels for me, I understand that there is a need. Mercy, there is no need. There is no need of any need existing for mercy to exist. Mean, you don't deserve it, that, is that is one way of looking at mercy. An act is called merciful when if uh, we are supposed to have received mercy if we are undeserving. That means we are not needed. Yeah? So this verse and the next verse is very interesting what Krishna is doing. And we'll, we'll try and this is one, one way where we, I, I'm trying to uh, show how deserving we should be of uh, or how grateful we should be of knowing that Krishna is so merciful. This is so that we all of us, you know, I'm I'm trying to put I'm trying to put all of us in that uh, you know um, the guilt syndrome. I'm not sure whether it's a good <laughs> strategy, but let me let me try and introduce this in another way too. Let us try to see if Krishna can be. Does he have humor in him? And then we'll also try to see if there is justice also where mercy exists. Justice is to do with discipline. Discipline is to, isn't it? Shashadhatu. Shashadhatu basically means that which guides you to what should be rewarded and what should be punished. The verbal root is shash. So what is the humor here? 84 lakhs of species of life. Everyone is okay with that? No confusion, doubt about it. 4 lakh species of? Humans amongst the 84 lakh species, right? Chaurasi lakshayoni, Chatush laksha, Anishana. We, we have heard about it, right? Of the 84 lakhs, it is a 4 lakhs that has the opportunity to do what? Sorry? Bhakti. To make it more relevant to our words today, that has the opportunity to remember Krishna and transfer oneself immediately, isn't it? So one way of looking at the human form is that if you have a human form, then the, then the utility of the human form is to be able to Remember Krishna and at once be transferred. Otherwise, it's a waste of this apparatus. We have not achieved the goal. So who has developed this apparatus? Who has designed that out of the 84 lakh species, 4 lakh species of humans would have this opportunity? Who's your original designer? Isn't it? Sat, sat, what is that? Charachar. Everything is coming from me under my direction. It works. Everything moving and non-moving. Correct? How would Krishna feel if every single model of his four lakh species would fail? I'm saying how, yeah. How would that make him feel as a designer? And if the designer wants to make this product work, shouldn't the designer give one great uh, one button that can help you do that in a single moment? He wants to prove the point. He's a good designer. 
So can you see Krishna's humor? He is like, please, my reputation is at stake. <laughs> you make this apparatus fail and I am going to be criticized. This apparatus is designed to be successful. Even if you are a failure throughout your life, at the moment of that, I give you this button. Push it. And you will be successful. And then Krishna, he not only says, because he knows that we don't, we may say that, hey, I don't care for your reputation at all. He says, even your reputation is at stake. Because of the 84 lakh species, you are one of the 4 lakh species. What face are you going to show to the other species? They are like, what is the difference between you and us now? Tell us. You are there in the human species and you did not make it work. We spit on you. Your reputation is at stake. My reputation is at stake. Please make this work. Just remember me at the moment of that and I will immediately transfer you to my abode, to my nature. That is Krishna. So here we see Krishna's benevolence. We also see his humor. Isn't it? Now Krishna's justice. For that we'll have to club it with the next verse also. It's already 8.48. Stop. Okay. Um, very briefly. Two, three minutes at the most. States that whatever you remember at the moment of that, that is what you will attain. Okay. And uh, we all can discuss it next time. So if I remember a dog at the moment of that, I'll become a dog. So someone who is um, was as brilliant as we are thinks that okay so if I think of my house will I become my house or if I think of my dollar notes will I become a dollar note currency because whatever I remember at the moment of that that is what I'll achieve So here, what is being spoken of is of living entities, not dead matter. Because remembrance is not the facility of dead matter. So whatever a living entity remembers would take that living entity to the form that has remembrance. But what kind of remembrance? Remembrance about four activities of animal life or has the intelligence. When I speak of remembrance, I'm speaking has to has intelligence. Matter does not have intelligence. Isn't it? However, if you're thinking of wealth, then we may become a living entity that is closely connected with wealth. We could become termites, paper currency, and eat it up. We could become bugs. We could become yakshas guarding wealth. All right. If remembrance gives you the next birth, your next body, according to what has been seen, remembrance at the time of death. If I remember, if I think of uh, if, if what I'm remembering is a dog's life, makes sense become a dog, a bird's life, become a bird, right? An insect's life, become an insect. How do you equate that with, if I remember Krishna, I become similar to Krishna's nature. How do you equate a dog's life's remembrance to remembrance of Krishna? Everything else can be in that category. So that is justice there. This is what you do. This is what you become. So you, if you're a dog, you're a dog, a horse, a horse, a cat, a cat, a bird, a bird, a human, a human. So there's justice in them. What you remember, that is what you get. So clear cut justice. But remembering Krishna and going to him, 
how do you even equate all the other processes with this process i mean this process is uh, so uh, it is so valuable or it has uh, such value becoming a dog or cat okay that, what is the value of it so again we see that within justice also even and these are like juxt- juxtaposed to each other justice and mercy if there has to be justice then you have to leave mercy aside and judge according to what the situation is then you can give judgments or you have to say that i overlook the judgment and i be merciful is that true but it is krishna that within justice can bring in mercy how he gets himself down to the level of dogs cats birds beasts humans and says within this even i am achievable for you if you remember me so that is the significance of today's verse hence when we say when prabhupada is saying krishna consciousness has been stressed the point is krishna is so merciful so krishna consciousness is so much needed it's extremely needed and we can do that by chanting hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare all right we'll stop here um the upcoming verses all will be in relationship to what happens when at the moment of that this um uh, uh based on what we remember another thing about remembrance is no i'll stop here that it be there's so many things that can be spoken about remembrance but this is enough for today any questions is there levels in remembrance like um, how how you remember Mm-hmm. you die only once so you don't get various levels of remembrance there's only one moment of remembrance so there's no levels i heard that the time of death the pain one goes through is like equated to so many millions of scorpions biting at the same time right yes 4.3 or 43 lakhs so that would be 4.3 million i guess yeah so with all the happening how do you how do you remember that is why prabhupada says tolerant so if one learns to be tolerant through all the downs in life through all the challenges in life through all those uh experiences where one feels like giving up and is tolerant and just goes through it so that builds up our uh inner you know builds up our uh, tolerance level could you share some practical tips how you can incorporate krishna during your work cuz you have to remember constantly that's the essence of this right uh, the dance so when you're working um like around that the most practical way to remember krishna always is to fall in love with him how you want to fall in love with him that you have to decide you have to find a way it's not that it's the same the same formula works for everyone so then when you look at the tree you remember your krishna when you look at your wallet you remember your krishna when you look at your self in the selfie mode remember krishna because you are in love with krishna anyone here 
has had an experience of, let's say, five minutes of love, so-called love. There's love. It's a very powerful um, sentiment. Falling in love. I'm not just saying love in terms of falling in love with the opposite gender. Just falling in love. Ever had an experience? Five minutes. Five minutes of falling in love. You have? We have two minutes left. Two minutes Sorry. left? <laughs> Sorry. 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 Five minutes, man. <laughs> So, Does it okay. also mean falling in love with work? Yes. So if you have fallen in love with something, do you see everything in terms of the object of your love? Everything. Everyone. Everything around me. Yes. I think uh, my identity today is determined by my work, not by yourself. See, it's so easy. <laughs> The difficult part is, what is the way I will fall for Krishna? Mm -hmm. So choose. Is that practical enough? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, please get our juices flowing. <laughs> <laughs> well, the theoretical way would have been chant Hare Krishna. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Prabhuji, one question. Yes. Uh, you ex while explaining this verse, you said, remember me and only me. Mm. Can you elaborate why you said only me? Because he says, Smaraneva. Only me, nothing else. What can I do? I'm just repeating <laughs> what he says. <laughs> that is, remember me, right? Eva, Eva, Eva. Okay. So Prabhuji Vrajan was uh, Ashin Prabhuji mentioned that uh, you know when uh, those many scorpions will come and get us uh, it is a very dreadful situation actually I mean, and even in our life we see like, like we face so many difficulties at that time then we don't remember Krishna I mean at least myself so in, at that instance you know what you know what kind of consciousness one should we have the potential to feel the presence of Krishna every single moment. The potential is there. Are we going to let our understanding of our incapabilities become an obstacle to that? Or are we going to feel confident? despite our incapabilities that I can still do it. That will determine. I may not have completely done my preparation for the exam next day. So I'm, will I let that overpower me uh, and prevent me from going and attempting? Or will I um, push myself? Sure. At least give it a try. What if the questions that are asked are from what I have studied? Sure. Yeah. So we have the potential. Why? Because we are part and parcel of Krishna. That is why we have the potential to remember Krishna every single moment of our life. We can choose not to do so, and we can justify it. Yeah. <laughs> by saying that so I am incapable right now however the potency is there All right. therefore how does patita pavana hitu sabavata mosama patita that is <laughs> I know I am the most fallen but you are the savior of the most fallen so you don't have a choice and I don't have a choice. <laughs> we are married to each other now. <laughs> so Mosama Patita Prabhu Napaya. So despite all my disqualifications, my qualification is that you are Patita Prabhu. That is the biggest qualification. Is it okay? Thank you.
Anything else? So any uh, summarizations of what we spoke today? Like we can have different devotees summarize at least one point. If there are more than one. Krishna is very merciful. He's giving us one chance to briefly come back. Very merciful. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Just for remembering him at the time of quitting, we will, at, in that instance, attain that nature. Yeah. Where do we find that reference? What you just said? Yeah, and also Prabhupada says that in the second line of the purport in English, at once, he says, at once transfer. It's, it's like, you know, when you have a political entity transferring the bureaucrats. <laughs> this is your transfer papers, done at once transferred. <laughs> Anything else? Make use of the, the master button. But be prepare yourself to push that button all life, but be ready for that. Yes. Krishna has given us this easy way out. Prepare to be ready to use that easy way. However, there will be a lot of impediments in this easy way, which may seem easy, may not be easy. Um, so be tolerant and continue pushing harder so you maintain or you establish that mood. So when the time comes, you are already thinking about this program. Correct. Use the apparatus for the purpose it was designed. Yes. So we don't know the. Yeah. So, so well, all, that is why always because we are not we don't know the antakal <laughs> it's right here see right beside us <laughs> it is right there buddies <laughs> so hence we have to practice all our life because right here the antakal is right here that actually made that so simple between <laughs> <laughs> this makes me think about it in India. It's very common, right? Um, especially oh, yeah. when I'm from North India and Delhi, we hear that oh, abhi kyo itna kar rahe ho puja part, you know, puri life padi hai. Jab bude ho jaoge, when you become old, then you do it. But this is the reason you have to prepare from now. <laughs> Because you may not have that chance. <laughs> so we'll stop. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai. Gaurabhakta Vrindaki Jai. Jai.